Hello, community members. The following slides will introduce you to the draft 2025 to 2029 financial plan as council is seeking public input into this draft plan. This plan has a direct impact on the services and projects that impact you and is funded in part by your property tax and utilities bills. Your questions and comments are important to us. Four principles guide the financial planning process. Stable and sufficient is about keeping rates stable so they do not fluctuate greatly from year to year and balancing this with increasing service requirements, reserve planning, and infrastructure and facility investment. The goal being that revenues are sufficient to support long-term goals for the community. Sustainable and equitable means that investment is sufficient to sustain the desired service level indefinitely, that everyone pays an equitable amount for the services they receive, and that the cost recovery model is equitable. Prudent and flexible is about ensuring that financial decisions aim to minimize risk and ensure future flexibility to adapt opportunities and or changing circumstances. Efficient and measurable focuses planning to ensure that services are provided in an efficient manner and that successes are measured using indicators and benchmarks. Generally speaking, the district continues to face financial challenges with increased cost pressures, increased borrowing costs, a growing community with diverse needs, housing shortages, and labor market competitiveness. In addition, the district has several large facility construction projects underway and is navigating the challenges of a new major industry entering into the community. Inflation, supply chain, and supplier availability continue to be a challenge, and while inflation is projecting to ease, these pressures are still being felt. Transit expansion continues to be a community priority and requires annual investment. The district has made significant investment into aging facilities, such as Brennan Park Recreation Center upgrades now underway, new fire halls, Valley Cliff Daycare, and a public works facility, which has been funded through land reserve, grants, and borrowing. The increased costs associated with borrowing for these facilities are spread across several years. The district recently ratified the Canadian Union of Public Employees three-year agreement, and these costs have annualization impacts on the financial plan. In addition, RCMP contract costs continue to rise, and population growth requires further investment in fire services. The district faces a number of disruptors, which include significant labor challenges, primarily around wage pressures, to remain competitive with the lower mainland and to attract and retain skilled employees, minimize staffing vacancies, and have the necessary resources to execute the district's strategic, operational, and capital plans. The district will continue to execute on several large disruptor initiatives and projects that require significant resources and include the Chikai Fan Debris Barrier, the WLNG and Fortis Eagle Mountain Pipeline Project, and housing accelerator initiatives, including provincial housing legislation changes. As with most BC municipalities, costs of capital infrastructure projects have outpaced historical asset replacement reserve contributions, including development cost charge reserves. Through the guidance of the district's new asset management plan and asset management reserve funding strategy, the district will continue towards proactive management and adequate reserve building efforts for the asset management capital program. As well, a major DCC bylaw update is scheduled. A thoughtful and measured approach has been taken to address these challenges and cost pressures. Some highlights include limiting service level changes to high priority and pre-committed changes only. This is after several years of minimal investment due to the focus on labor contract negotiations, pandemic, and post-pandemic limitations. The district implemented new software which has provided better forecasting and analysis tools to review, forecast, and reduce operating costs. This allowed the district to absorb inflation and reduce costs across all departmental budgets and was a critical part of minimizing costs. Staff have maximized funding opportunities, leveraging external funding sources and utilizing provisions to smooth costs year to year. 
As the capital plan requirements continue to grow, a major process improvement is to attribute staff that work on capital projects to be funded by the projects themselves. This ensures the accurate costs of the capital project are captured and accounted for and allows the flexibility to scale resources up or down to execute the capital plan. Staff continued to apply rigor to project prioritization and prioritized risk, including critical asset replacement risk, projects that address health and safety concerns or address a high degree of financial risk. As well, the process prioritizes legislation, strategic plan, and master plans projects while considering funding limitations and staff capacity. The district improved cash flow management processes to include temporary borrowing, which allows the district to delay large long-term debt issuance by managing cash flow for construction of capital projects through small short-term temporary borrowing. This slide illustrates the projected tax impact over the next five years for the draft financial plan, which is on average a 10.5% increase annually after non-market change. Understandably, these are challenging numbers, particularly in 2026 and 2027, when the borrowing costs of facilities construction are issued. However, staff are hearing similar early numbers from other small to medium communities in BC. Common themes across municipalities are the rising costs of RCMP, which are having large financial impacts at the local government level, fire services requirements, ongoing labor contract negotiations, and increased responsibilities from provincial mandates in the housing and affordable housing arena, which are increasing costs to local governments across BC. Looking at 2025 specifically, the 9.6% increase represents a $250 increase to the average residential taxpayer. This increase is made up of pre-committed operating revenues and expenses of 6%, changes in debt servicing costs of 0.8%, service level changes, and special operating projects of 3.4%, contributions to asset management reserves of 2.4%, and an estimated non-market change reduction of 3%, which adds or subtracts taxpayers, for example, through new development. In 2025, service level changes funded by taxation total $1.4 million, which represents a 3.4% tax increase, or $88 to the average residential taxpayer. This increase is made up of the key elements on this slide and includes increases for fire services, police municipal employees, transit expansion, exempt staff wage adjustment to remain competitive in the labor market, library services, and various other department increases. For utilities, the following increases are proposed to the residential flat utility rates for 2025, an increase of 1.8% for water, which is based on the recommendation of the Asset Management Reserve Funding Strategy, and assumes that additional revenue from growth and customers is sufficient to cover increased costs of the utility. An increase of 5.7% for wastewater, which is based on 3.4% recommended in the Asset Management Reserve Funding Strategy, plus a further 2.3% increase to meet the basic utility needs. An increase of 5.2% for solid waste, which is made up of 5% to fund existing financing costs, plus 0.2% as per the Asset Management Reserve Funding Strategy. The Solid Waste Reserve will need to be used to cover debt servicing costs in 2025 to keep rate increases stable and consistent. Within the utilities, special operating projects total $19.5 million over five years, with just over $7 million budgeted for 2025. Utilities capital projects totaled $230 million over five years, with $60 million budgeted in 2025. General Fund Special Operating Projects total $18.1 million, which includes $11.6 million for large externally funded operational initiatives, not within the district's normal course of business. Excluding these externally funded projects, the total cost is just under $6.5 million over five years with just under $2 million to be spent in 2025. 
direct taxation funds $210,000 in 2025 with government grants and reserves funding the remainder. General fund capital projects total $155 million over five years, with $50 million budgeted for 2025. This amount will be funded by various sources, including development cost charges, federal and provincial grants, borrowing, community amenity contributions from developers, and district reserves. For utility projects included in the five-year financial plan, district reserves are a key source for funding. The district is making a concerted effort to contribute to these reserves annually in order to ensure sufficient funding for projects over the life of our infrastructure or assets. Similar for general fund projects in the five-year financial plan, there are several district reserves that receive annual contributions and will be used to fund projects in these areas. Most notably used are the general capital reserve to be used to fund new works, extensions or renewals of existing works, the equipment replacement reserve to purchase equipment, and the land sale reserve to be used for acquiring land for municipal purposes. Borrowing is an important funding source for capital projects to spread the cost of projects over the life of the project so future taxpayers also help pay. The district has the advantage of being able to borrow from the Municipal Finance Authority, a nonprofit organization that offers low cost financing to municipalities in BC. Debt servicing is defined as the annual principal and interest payments. The district is legislatively limited on how much borrowing it can have authorized at any one time. The community charter limits the district to a 25% debt servicing limit and the district's own policy further limits that to a maximum of 20%. The additional borrowing required to support the five-year financial plan brings the debt servicing to 17.6%. We invite you to dive deeper into the five-year financial plan. Explore capital project and special operating project lists via our online tool and view the detailed report to Council from the October 29th special business meeting called Tying It All Together. Find links, ask a question, or leave a comment on letstalksquamish.ca. Send us an email to budgetfeedback at squamish.ca. Thank you for your time.